The consideration of Business Motion 12875 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a revised program, business programme for today and tomorrow. I would ask any member who objects to say so now, and I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move the motion. Formally moved. Thank you. No one uh, wishes to speak against the motion. The question, therefore, is that Motion 12875 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. We turn now to topical questions. We have one question today. Sandra White. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions it has had with relevant bodies regarding the recent fire and ongoing situation at the Glasgow School of Art. Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. Presiding Officer, we're all shocked at the devastation this fire has brought to the iconic Macintosh building, a landmark uh, in Glasgow and renowned across the world. Thankfully, there were no casualties. Uh, the First Minister spoke with Alistair Hay, Chief Fire Officer of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, on Saturday the 16th of June to discuss the response to the fire and visited the scene to thank firefighters and other emergency services for their outstanding efforts to bring the devastating fire under control and manage the situation over the recent days. The Minister for Community Safety and Legal Affairs uh, met with Ian Bushell, Deputy Chief Fire Officer, this morning to discuss the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service and echoed the First Minister's sentiments. The Minister for Further Education, Higher Education and Science and I met with senior colleagues from Glasgow School of Art, including the school's director and the chair of the board yesterday afternoon to discuss the ongoing situation at the Macintosh building and what support might be required in the period ahead. Historic Environment Scotland and the Scottish Funding Council were also present. During the response phase of the fire, officials were in communication with the emergency services and Glasgow City Council through the well-established Scottish Government resilience arrangements. This is a devastating event, but I can assure the members that the Scottish Government and its agencies have already and will continue to provide what support we can. Sandra White. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her reply and I also want to pay tribute to the firefighters who I met the other day who really have worked tirelessly to bring the fire under control and all services involved in what is a devastating blow for everyone involved in the MAC locally and internationally. Uh, this major fire, however, has far-reaching implications for local people and local businesses who are one, unable to access their flats and in the case of businesses who are unable to operate and staff being laid off. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what support the Scottish Government can offer to those affected? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I think these are very important points. Uh, the issue particularly around the emergency services, I think it shows the benefit of the single service. The Scottish Fire and Rescue Service uh, drew appliances and crew from across Scotland. And I think that in terms of their rapid response and their containment, uh, they should be absolutely commended for outstanding professionalism. Uh, the fact that they managed to contain the fire, I would point out that uh, until uh, fairly recently there has been a live fire site operation. Indeed, the containment as I understand it, still continues with presence of the fire service. Uh, but in terms of also the other emergency services, clearing that space Friday night, late at night, ensuring that the safety of people in terms of the evacuation uh, was carried out again in an exemplary form by the other emergency services. But our point about the cordon, the cordon obviously is for safety, continuing safety until the security of buildings uh, can be assured by the relevant authorities, has had major implications for local businesses. These are businesses that have also had uh, issues, particularly around recent fires in other parts of Socky Hall Street. And I know Socky Hall Street itself uh, is subject to a city deal uh, redevelopment aspects. I know the uh, leader of the council, Susan Aitken, is meeting with businesses this afternoon. I understand the council, as they can do, is offering zero rating for businesses. That's absolutely appropriate. But we will also work with the city council to understand what it is the government can do in relation to some of those areas not least because the loss of the O2 and the ABC also has a major implication for those that are employed there, but also for the music development. So I, I think it's very important that we recognise that and we will stand ready to, to see what offer of support we can provide. Sandra Boyd. I, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that reply and certainly the local businesses and the local people were very pleased to hear that, particularly the businesses that uh, zero rating, uh, obviously the O2 and the CCA have been very badly affected as well. However, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware that uh, many questions, and we don't want to speculate on anything at all, are being asked as to how this fire could happen, particularly after the previous fire. Uh, basically, some of the questions that I've been asked and others have too is, were sprinklers installed? Were smoke alarms installed? 
was security there? All very valid questions. So if I can ask the Cabinet Secretary what steps have been taken to investigate how this fire happened and when are we likely to have much needed answers? Uh, can I say, well, these are points and many questions that people will want answered. I, I, I'm not in the position to answer that. I can uh, speak for the Scottish Government. Uh, but what I can reassure the member of is that the fire investigation that's taking place also in, in connection with the uh, police service in relation to ruling out whether they can or not rule out uh, criminal activity. Uh, these investigations will establish uh, what can be known, but also that information uh, as to what was being uh, managed in, in relation to the construction site, how fire uh, management was being uh, delivered. Uh, these items will have already been addressed uh, in part by uh, a statement from the Keogh Construction who were managing the site. Remember, this was a construction site at the time of the fire um, and also uh, by others as well. I think these are points that are very well made and very well uh, put. But as the member might appreciate, I don't want to rush to judgment and I don't want to speculate. I want to deal in facts and I want to make sure that the relevant authorities have the time uh, to enable this information accurately to be reflected. Adam Tompkins, be followed by Polly McNeill. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I, I thank Sandra White for bringing this matter to the Chamber and um, the Cabinet Secretary for the tone and tenor of her answers so far. This is the third major fire in the Sockey Hall Street area of Glasgow City Centre in the last four years, and the second, of course, to afflict the much beloved Mac building of the Glasgow School of Art. This looks like it's by far the most serious of the three major fires. It's not just the Glasgow School of Art that has been all but destroyed. It is also the much loved and very successful music venue, the O2 ABC, where I, like many members of the Scottish Parliament and many of, our, um, the people, many of the people that we represent, will have made, uh, spent much time enjoying all sorts of uh, music events. The economic devastation to this part of Glasgow City Centre is immense. Could the Cabinet Secretary please um, explain in a little bit more detail than she was able to in her first answers to Sandra White exactly what um, support the Scottish Government can give to the businesses uh, of the Sockey Hill Street area of Glasgow City Centre to ensure that that part of the city centre can continue to thrive and prosper in the future as it has done in the past? Again, uh, the member reflects on the seriousness of the fire to other buildings as well. Um, and I, I also want to reinforce the point that it is quite amazing that there has been no casualties, bearing in mind the proximity of that fire to what could have been a very extensive uh, incident in relation uh, to movement of people in that area with the O2 and the, and the ABC and indeed um, the neighbouring nightclub. Uh, the fact it didn't happen an hour or two later when there were many people more expected in that area, I, I think again is testament to the services and their evacuation. Um, in terms of the point about the uh, economy of Soggy Hall Street, I think there are a number of immediate issues which to do, are to do with access, the cordon, and also uh, any uh, short-term business rates, uh, zero rating, which I think I understand is happening. I also, as I said, uh, understand the City Council leader is meeting with businesses this afternoon. So let's hear from them what their, their views and, 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 and their uh, concerns are. I think the point, though, is the nighttime economy of Glasgow is extremely important. That part of Glasgow is vital to the nighttime economy of Soggy Hall Street. So I'm very conscious and aware of that. And, I, and if I can assure the members, when I reported to Cabinet yesterday when we met um, in Cumnock, uh, one of the aspects, of course, was about the building, of course, was about Glasgow School of Art as an institution. But I also made the point that in our response, we had to recognise the wider implications. So I'm not going to give immediate uh, solutions to this issue. The fire only happened on Friday night. But I do think in trying to make sure that businesses can be sustained in the short term, but probably more importantly as well, development in the long term, I, would, I do want to speak to Glasgow City Council and those that are involved in, in the nighttime economy and, and, and elsewhere. I want a vibrant uh, art scene in Scotland at the School of Art, but I also want a vibrant music scene and I think these things both have to be addressed in our response. Pauline McNeill to be followed by Patrick Harvey. Presiding, presiding Officer, I'd like to associate uh, myself with the remarks made by other members. I'm pleased that the Cabinet Secretary has recognised the importance of Sucky Hall Street and the Sucky Hall Street area to the economy of Glasgow and to the music industry in, in Scotland. Um, she is well aware that there's a serious concern that Sucky Hall Street, if it doesn't get the right support, may not recover from this, as Trace has already been concerned about the impact of their businesses. So the leader of Glasgow City Council announced this morning the zero rates will apply to those businesses within the cordon, but it isn't clear what happens to those businesses and surrounding businesses 
after the cordon has been lifted. Is the Cabinet Secretary able to comment on what support can be given to those businesses in relation to business rates specifically? Uh, and further to that, I'd also like to associate myself with the same remarks as Adam Tonkins and the Cabinet Secretary. The, the O2 Academy is a world-renowned, world-class music venue, and I know that its future will not be sidelined by some of the other issues around it. It's a very, very special place, and I believe and I hope that the Cabinet Secretary and everyone involved will work very closely together to make sure that all of the institutions have a future where they are. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I hope the member understands from the remarks I've already met, made um, that I do understand the issues around Stocky Hall Street. I do understand the importance of the O2 ABC in relation to the music scene, uh, not just in Scotland, but further afield. I think it is quite interesting, the questions I've had today. I probably had more questions about that than I have had about the Macintosh building itself. So I think uh, Parliament has spoken in that regard. But I, I do want to reassure those who may be watching this that we understand that the support has to be for the institution itself, Glasgow School of Art, um, to assess the, the building itself, the Macintosh building, which has great uh, love, loyalty and affection um, from those that have studied and worked there, but also recognising that it's a wider area. And I think the response has to be, look at this in a wider area. So the, the point I made in, in saying that I brought this to Cabinet's attention yesterday, but did so deliberately to say that these are wider issues and that Cabinet colleagues from other portfolios would have an interest is something that I, I will certainly um, reflect back to Cabinet again, the views of the MSPs here, particularly for uh, that, uh, the role of the Minister for Finance and, and perhaps there may be some other business rates longer term or perhaps in a wider area that can be considered. But I want to hear directly from the businesses themselves, from the task force that has been set up, um, to hear what they think would be the most useful thing for them. And I think that's a very important step in terms of the government's wider response, not just the heritage response that I will lead on. I'll take Patrick Harvey. There's a few more members <coughs> wish to ask questions. I'll take a few more questions, if they are questions, uh, not just expressions of sympathy and understanding, short questions. Patrick Harvey first, though. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Given the series of fires that we've seen, which were mentioned by Adam Tompkins, those, those three, but also not so many years before that, the fire that just destroyed the, the shack just around the, the corner uh, from the art school. Given this, is there a wider question about not only reassuring the public about the safety of our built environment, but actually being proactive, not leaving this to a, a question of heritage alone? Do we need to take a more proactive approach to ensuring that our built environment, uh, whether in Glasgow, in China Cross, or anywhere else, is being proactively looked after so that we don't see these kind of situations happening to buildings that we frankly cannot afford to lose? Cabinet Secretary. I think the member makes a, a very valid point. Again, something we discussed at Cabinet was the importance of ensuring that um, all built environment, particularly of a heritage nature, um, the, there is a, a clear understanding of the responsibilities and the actions that are required to make sure as much safety and, and fire prevention can take place. But I think he makes a very valid point. I think sometimes it isn't until a disaster happens that people are conscious of the importance of built environment, whether it's in, in terms of uh, roofing, whether it's in terms of repairs, whether it's in terms of fire safety. And I think the country does need to come to terms with the fact there are so many older buildings, and particularly in Glasgow. And I think uh, putting a focus on that uh, would help us in trying to make sure that we can uh, prevent uh, issues in the future, but also take that responsibility for our built environment, which is so precious, but potentially so dangerous if fires or other incidents happen. John McAlpine. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the artist Lachlan Glowdy uh, described Glasgow School of Art as the most important piece of Scottish art probably ever produced. So while I think it is concerned to Glasgow and the businesses and express sympathy with other members, I think this is about our nation and what it gives to the world. This is of world significance. Uh, and on that note, um, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the report by Sir John Cole uh, into Keir Construction, who were the uh, contractor responsible for Glasgow School of Art. Sir John Cole was extremely critical of Keir Construction's work on the Dumfries uh, Leisure Centre. In fact, he described it as virtually unprecedented in its level of faults, including inadequate fire stopping. Uh, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that it's shocking uh, that, uh, uh, that this particular company uh, was in charge of the restoration of the most important piece of Scottish art ever produced? Cabinet Secretary. 
the member has, has made a point. Um, I cannot, as a government minister, rush to judgment on anything that can be said about the, the incident of the fire without the explanation that uh, we can have from the investigations that are taking place. Uh, and I think, and I, I would caution members in terms of what they accuse uh, other, other institutions of doing or not doing until that information is there. Um, she, people can express their views, people will express their opinions, but as your government minister, I think I have a duty and a responsibility to make sure that we have the facts and the evidence in place uh, before I can make any judgments whatsoever. Claire Baker. Um, thank you. Uh, Glasgow School of Art is so important to Glasgow and Scotland's historical, architectural and cultural legacy and its future and it was devastating over the UK and to see the scenes that we all witnessed. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if she can update us on any initial structural engineering reports and if it is not yet safe to carry out those reports, when she thinks this information might be available so we can fully understand the options there might be for the Art College going forward? Um, I think I, would, I need to, to emphasise the point that we're still in a period where safety and security is paramount and there's still been appliances on site right through the weekend and into Monday, Tuesday. So uh, until it is safe to go on site, then that uh, level of, of structural um, assessment can't take place. There has been initial structural assessment, very uh, superficial uh, as the word I would describe. There will be drones that, will can, go, that can be um, used that are per perhaps in a, a more safe environment. These things are just only taking place today and in the next few days. So I think it again would be uh, too, too, I think too premature to say definitively what the status of the building uh, is. Uh, but the security of the building and in the surrounding areas is paramount. Once that has been secured and the, uh, we're reassured of the security and safety aspects, those assessments will take place primarily by building control from Glasgow City Council um, in the process. But we're all anxious to find out how secure particularly the shell of the building is. I think it's quite obvious that the internals um, uh, have been lost. I visited there in February. Um, but again, this is quite different from the last fire. The last fire, the East Wing was by and large you know, protected by the actions, swift actions by the fire service. The ferocity of this fire, the severity, the complexity and the challenge of it is still being dealt with as we speak. So I think if, if people can bear with us until such times as the structural engineers can themselves have thorough access, um, then I think it's premature to be able to say what the condition of the building is. Very briefly, Richard Lockhart. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary will be aware, even though it's the Glasgow School of Art, that many parts of Scotland have a deep connection with the school, including Murray, where the school's rural campus is based, and will she convey to the authorities, the staff and the students that if there's anything that the people of Murray or indeed the rest of Scotland can do to help, that we stand ready to do so? I think that's a very important point. Um, the messages of support and indeed I think the solidarity of the people and the institutions of Scotland and indeed from places like Murray but elsewhere are, are messages of support that are, I think will be well received. I met, as I said, with the Glasgow School of Art uh, senior leadership last night. They have been working extensively um, right through from Friday night. Um, and I think it's important that they hear from every the support they have for what Joe McAlpine has described as the best piece of Scottish art. And so therefore, in terms of how we can support them, those messages are very, very important indeed. We stand with Glasgow School of Art, we stand with the people of Glasgow, and I think internationally, the world of art stands with Charles Rennie McIntosh. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. Apologies to the members who couldn't get in there, uh, but that concludes our topical questions. We'll turn to the next item of business. Mr. Mr. Finney. Yes, point of order from Mr. Finney. President officer, President officer, you'll be aware that under Rule 9b1, subparagraph 1, this Parliament refused to consent to the European Union withdrawal bill. Last week, despite that lack of consent, the UK Government's timetable allowed the UK Parliament just over 15 minutes to debate our concerns and indeed all issues that related to devolution in Scotland, Wales and the North of Ireland. I understand no MPs representing Scottish constituency had the opportunity to speak. Uh, President Officer, I'm also a member of the Parliament's Justice and Rural Economy and Connectivity uh, Committees and for several months now we've attempted unsuccessfully to get uh, Government Ministers to come before us. They've often um, cancelled at very short notice um, and uh, I understand that other committees have been treated with similar discourtesy. This Parliament has been treated with utter, utter contempt by the UK Government and in particular by the Secretary of State for Scotland. Presiding Officer, under Rule 31D, 
The presiding officer shall represent the Parliament in discussions and exchanges with any parliamentary, governmental, administrative or other body. President officer, can you please advise members whether you have had or plan to ha have any discussions with the UK Government or the UK Parliamentary Authorities regarding the contempt shown Scotland's Parliament in recent times? <laughs> Can I thank Mr Finney for giving me advance notice that he intended to raise a point of order and as he and perhaps other members will recall, uh, I did uh, in response to a point of order at the time the uh, Parliament's position on the LCM was agreed to, uh, I did advise members at that time that I would write to my counterparts at Westminster and in other legislatures uh, around the UK to make them aware of this Parliament's position in relation to the EU withdrawal bill and I did exactly that. In line with normal procedures, the clerk, the chief executive of this parliament, the clerk, also wrote to his counterparts uh, in the UK parliament. The UK parliament is therefore fully aware of this parliament's position. We'll now move on to the next item of business, which is a statement.